On November 5th, city voters will be asked to consider Proposal MH. I wanted to take a few minutes today to give a presentation because I want to make sure that everyone understands what is being asked. I'll be giving numerous presentations and hosting meetings throughout the city, so if you have a club, a committee, or a neighborhood group and you would like for me to discuss Proposal MH, just let me know and we'll set things up. Starting in August and carrying through until November, City Council worked with staff to have numerous strategic planning meetings about the future of the City of Madison Heights. Throughout these meetings, we really visualized what we wanted to see the city like in the future and worked backward until today to determine what services and steps we needed to put in place to start moving the city forward. To build a city with quality features, with quality fire, police, and activities for our residents in order to provide a quality life. This strategic plan painted Madison Heights as a vibrant, fiscally sound community that is competitive with our neighboring communities in retaining and attracting residents and businesses by providing high quality services, including public safety and quality of life programs, including economic development, parks and recreation, library, and special events. So what is stopping us from achieving this vision today? After all, the economy is great and the housing market has recovered, right? Well, not exactly. Even though the economy is better, it's not significantly better for city finances. 62% of the city's revenues are generated from tax revenue. So during the recession, the city of Madison Heights lost over 35% in taxable value, which equaled a direct reduction in our revenues. There is no cap on the decrease of taxable value for the city. For example, if you purchased your house in 2006 for $80,000, your taxable value would have been roughly $40,000. However, as your house lost value during the recession, the taxable value dropped by the same percentage. However, now that your house is increasing in market value, the taxable value does not increase by the same percentage. The taxable value is capped by the amount of state inflation. This past year, state inflation was calculated at a high point of 2.4%. Next year, it's projected to be only 1.7%. This is stopping the city from increasing our revenues, and it will take until 2038 to get back to the same point we were at in 2006, regardless of the market value of your home. So if you look at this slide, you will see that in 2008, the city's taxable value was $1.2 billion, which generated $1.2 million each year for one mil of taxes. Now, in 2020, that amount is estimated to only be $820,000 for one mil. To put it in context, if you had a job making $60,000 a year at the beginning of the recession, it would be like now only making $39,000 a year without any way to generate more income. This slide illustrates the eight special millages that are levied for the general fund. Those include general operating, vehicles, ALS, solid waste, senior citizens, police and fire pension, library, and millage restoration. If you notice the green bar, this is the charter base millage for the city. This green bar dropped drastically during the recession, and as you can tell from this slide, it is not growing. Special millages in yellow at the top are for the library, and in brown are for millage restoration, are expiring next year. They will be rolled into this charter millage. So what have we done as a city to cut our cost? We've eliminated personnel throughout the city. In the five years of the recession, we eliminated 47 employees. This was in addition to the 31 that we had already eliminated since 1997. We've deferred infrastructure and equipment maintenance on equipment throughout the entire city, including critical equipment such as police and fire and DPS. We basically only fix things when they're completely broken. We've had numerous employee union concessions. This includes elimination or reductions of pension, wages, retiree health care, and several other benefits throughout the contracts. We've also contracted out complete departments and reduced many services. These include a reduction of library hours, a complete contracting out of departments such as assessing and equalization, information technology, 
and many other DPS services, such as mowing, sidewalk replacements. This slide illustrates really what has happened to these city employees throughout the time. So in 1997, we had 227 employees in the city. Now we're down to 149. This proposal would be adding only police and fire and dispatching services, so six employees to this. So why millage and what exactly is being proposed? City Council considered several options over the past few years in lieu of a millage. However, even though we've been focusing on economic development and that continues to be a driving force in the city, it is not increasing significant changes in our revenue streams. So what is exactly being proposed and asked of, of the residents? We are asking to increase the charter base millage from 10 mils to 16 mils. However, this is not a six mil increase. We will be consolidating several special millages into this charter millage, such as library, ALS, vehicles, and millage restoration. This will result in a 3.3684 mil increase. Library and millage restoration are expiring in the upcoming year. The amount levied for the purpose is approved by council each budget year and is subject to fluctuate and could actually be less based on citizen comments during this budget period. For an average cost of 36 cents per day per household, we can make sure that we live in a safe city with community features that reflect our daily lifestyle. We will be building a quality city for a quality life. For 2020, the average market value in Madison Heights is $115,820 with $38,020 in taxable value. So what exactly will this millage do? It will stabilize funding for the general operations and library services. Two of our special millages will be expiring in 2020. That's for library and millage restoration. Millage restoration covers many general activities of the city, such as street sweeping, leaf pickup, snow plowing, police and fire services, and general operations such as elections and accounting. We'll be consolidating four separate millages into this one charter millage and providing a stabilized funding mechanism for all services. We will be finally able to improve emergency services. During the recession, the three departments that took, ended up with the largest cuts were police, fire, and DPS. This millage will allow us to hire three firefighters two police officers, and one dispatch person in order to enhance our services. It will also allow us to staff the currently unstaffed vehicles that are kept in our fire stations. In addition, we can address critical infrastructure capital assets throughout all departments, including replacing our dump trucks, fire equipment, and police vehicles. Currently, we're only able to replace those by using financing mechanisms, which really threaten the financial future of the city with increasing our debt. So what else will this millage do? It will increase the quality of life amenities. These are improvements that could be requested by residents throughout the master planning process and could include things like updating place structures throughout the city, splash pads, walking trails, trees, special events, and downtown development or economic development enhancements. Really, it's unlimited and up to you, the residents. This slide should look familiar from a few moments ago. So what will happen when the millage passes? If you look to the far right where you see 2020, you will see that if the support is there for proposal MH, the green bar finally does increase, but it is still not back to the level that it was before the recession. The other changes are the special millages, the yellow and the brown at the top and the red three quarters up are rolled into the green bar. So what if a millage MH is not successful? Basically, things will stay as is. Public safety services will remain as they are. However, if costs for service continue to increase, we will rely more and more on mutual aid from other communities. We will also continue to defer infrastructure and equipment maintenance really making our equipment unreliable during critical periods. So in conclusion, please consider the information, get your questions answered, visit the city website at madison-heights backslash millage where there is a tax calculator, 
and get out and vote on November the 5th.